take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and see how that feels. If it feels good, keep it up. If it feels too strenuous, try another rhythm of breathing. Shorter or more shallow, heavier or lighter. Just pose that question in the mind. What kind of breathing would feel good now? You notice the breathing process is not just air coming in and out through the nose. The body has to move. And it's the movement of the body that we're interested in here. That's also called a kind of breath. It's the energy that allows the air to come in and out. And notice where you feel that energy, where it feels good and where it doesn't feel so good. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Just keep asking that question, what would feel good right now, right now, each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out? And try to get a sense of exactly how long is just right. You want to stay with the breathing process as consistently as you can so you notice what the little signals are that tell you, okay, now the breath is getting too long or it wasn't deep enough the last time. Let's try a little bit deeper this time. It's only when you watch things continually like this that you can actually notice these things. If your attention skips off someplace else, you miss a lot of the signs. So we're trying to stay with the breath here. We're trying to stay with a sense of curiosity. We're exploring something here. And learning new habits. You may discover that the way you've been breathing has not been good for the body. Some parts of the body seem to be starved of breath energy. Other parts are overworked. If you find that's a part that's been overworked, Think of each breath coming in for that part of the body to give it some more energy. And you may find that you have to adjust your posture a bit so that things are more balanced. You're not leaning to the left, not leaning to the right, not stooped over, not leaning back. Try to sensitize yourself to what the body's doing here simply in the process of breathing and what you can do to make it a more healing process. Because the breath is, after all, what keeps the body alive. And if the breathing goes really well, it actually is healing for the body. The Buddha often compares his dharma to medicine. He's a doctor. And the medicine is not a chemical compound. It's more like a rehab process. You're rehabilitating your body. You're rehabilitating your mind. Because the diseases of the mind are greed, aversion, and delusion. And we wound ourselves with the things that we do under the power of those mental qualities. And although we may have picked up habits from outside, in the same way that you can pick up germs from outside. The fact that we choose to follow those habits that other people have shown us as examples, that was our choice. And so the diseases we have in the mind are self-inflicted. And so to heal the mind, you don't just let it sit there and do nothing or be non-reactive. You've got to think of it as rehab work. You've sprained your ankle. You can't just sit there and leave it immobile. Sometimes it gets worse. You've got to find exercises to keep it mobile and keeping it from freezing into 
unhealthy positions. This is why when the Buddha teaches meditation, he doesn't teach you simply to be non-reactive. He wants you to learn to be patient, so you can sit with things for a while and watch them. But it's not just to watch them and leave it at that. You want to watch things carefully so you can see that you have an unhealthy habit here, an unhealthy habit there, unhealthy ways of thinking, unhealthy ways of perceiving things. But you can change them. So he gives you suggestions on different ways of looking at things, different ways of exercising the mind. There was a conversation he had one time where he was telling the monks it would be good if they practiced breath meditation more. And one monk says, oh, I already, already practice breath meditation. And the Buddha asked him, well, what kind of breath meditation do you practice? And the monk says, well, I put aside thoughts of the past, and I don't hanker after the future, and I'm just very equanimous about what happens in the present moment as I breathe in, breathe out. And the Buddha said, well, there is that kind of breath meditation, but that's not the kind that gives the best results. Then he taught the monks the 16 steps of breath meditation. And if you look at them, you notice a lot of them are training yourself to breathe in a certain way, or training yourself to pay attention to certain feelings, emphasize certain feelings, give rise to certain feelings, rise to mental states things that are healing. For instance, once you get in touch with how the breath feels, then try to be aware of the whole body. So you can notice the impact of the breath on the body. And then if you notice it's too strenuous in some spots, or you're putting too much force on some spots, then you try to calm it down. You try to breathe in a way that gives rise to a sense of fullness and ease. And then you begin to notice how the feelings of the breath have an impact on the mind and how the perceptions of what's happening in the breathing process will have an impact both on the mind and on the way you breathe. You try to calm that down. Then you look at the state of your mind. Is it steady enough? How is its energy level? If its energy level is low, you try to gladden it. If it's too frenetic, you try to steady it. If you notice any ways that the mind is thinking about things or focusing on things that are burdensome, you try to free it from that burden. In other words, you're doing things here. It's rehab work. You're exercising the mind, exercising the mind through playing with the process of breathing, getting to know the process of breathing really thoroughly. In the Buddha's analysis of causation, he talks about how Ignorance has an impact on the process of fabrication, and one of the things with which we fabricate our experience is the way we breathe. And because we breathe in ignorance, that's one of the things that leads to suffering, that leads to stress. So what we're doing here now is bringing more knowledge, more awareness to the process of breathing, exercising all the possibilities of how you could think about the breath, how you could perceive the breath, to see what's most healing exercising the mind through exploring the process of breathing. You're taking a proactive stance here. Now, sometimes that means just watching for a while and not doing anything. But it also means that if you see that something is uncomfortable or seems to be harmful, you can change your habits. And as you develop the sensitivity from this, it can then be applied to other habits you might have ways you've been thinking, ways you've been acting that are harmful to yourself, harmful to others. And you do rehab work on your own mind as well, learning how to think in new ways, learning how to act in new ways. There's a group of ascetics during the Buddhist time, they're called the Jains. Their theory was that the reason people suffer is because they have actions, they have intentions. And therefore, they should just stop acting. And by learning how to stop acting, being totally non-reactive, that would be the, the way to release. And the Buddha pointed out that simply stopping your actions 
It's not healing for the mind. It doesn't release the mind, doesn't free the mind. It just kind of freezes things up. His path is more proactive. You learn how to act in a new way, a way that ultimately does lead to the end of action, leads to the end of intention, but it does it through understanding, through the mastery of skills, the skill of how to breathe, the skill of how to perceive things, the skill of how to think about things. It's these skills that are healing. As you look back on your life and you see there are a lot of places where you've acted in the ways that have been hurtful to yourself, hurtful to others. What you're trying to create here as you meditate is a place where you can do healing work, healing actions, healing thoughts, healing perceptions. And it starts by training your thoughts and perceptions and learning, learning how to breathe in a healing way. Rehab work for the mind, rehab work for the way you approach experience in general. So the Buddha wasn't the kind of doctor who would simply have you lie in bed and remain immobile. He also wasn't the kind of doctor who just give you a shot and send you home. It's more like a physical therapist, teaching you new ways to walk, new ways to hold your body as you sit. But it goes further than that, of course. He teaches you new ways to breathe, new ways to think, new ways to perceive things. And as you develop these new habits, you find that the habits themselves are healing. So think of the breath work, think of the meditation as rehab work. The effort is involved. You have to learn how to think in new ways. You have to learn how to ask questions and look at what's going on. Notice how you're shaping your experience and trying out new ways, yep, shaping the experience. And as you develop these new skills, you find that they take you to true health. That was one of the Buddha's names for nirvana. True health for the mind. A mind that's been healed because it knows how to do its own healing work.